we're running so late this morning. Quinn, hurry up. We're going to be late for church. And we need to eat quick. We got Frosted Flakes and Fruit Loops. Next week, we'll make pancakes, but this week we just got to stick with cereal. Oh, my alarm just did not go off today. Are you ready, Quinn? Okay, we're going to talk about what we talked about last week, which was compassion. And compassion said, help me love others the way you love me. And so the next line is repentance. And, it's gonna, and that's what we're going to talk about this week. And the repentance is a very important part of our prayer life. Because of Jesus, we are always offered forgiveness. And he asks us to do the very same thing when someone offends or hurts us. And sometimes this can be really tough. I think I'm going to have Fruit Loops today. They're my favorite. Um, actually, I thought that I was going to have Fruit Loops before I even came to the kitchen. So I'm going to take those. I had my heart set on them. Well, actually, Rachel, you didn't say it. So they're fair game. Come on, Quinn. I want the Fruit Loops. Like, let, don't be a baby about it. I'm going to have the Fruit Loops. It's not fair. I wanted the Fruit Loops. I was in the kitchen first, and the first person gets to pick the first cereal. Okay, Rachel. Fine. I don't want to pick a fight. All right, boys and girls. Let's do this. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me and making me one of your children. Help me love and obey you. Help me love others the way you love me. I'm sorry for my sins. Wash me clean.
One day, Peter asked Jesus, how many times should we forgive someone who sins against us? Up to seven times? Jesus replied, 70 times seven, and told them another story to explain. There once was a king who called his servants together to have them tell him what they owed him. One servant owed the king a huge amount of money that he would never be able to repay. The king said, I'm going to sell you and your family as slaves in order to pay back the money you owe me. The servant cried, no, please, please don't do that. I beg you, please show mercy to my family and me. The king was a kind man and felt compassion and said, I release you, you are free of all debt. But guess what that very same servant did? She went and found her own servant that owed her a tiny amount of money and said, if you don't pay me back every penny you owe, I will throw you in jail. The servant begged, please be patient with me. I beg you for mercy. But the woman had a cruel heart and showed no mercy. Instead, she put her servant in jail. But it wasn't very long before the king found out what his servant has done. He became very angry and said, you wicked servant, I forgave you the huge debt because you begged me. Why didn't you show that same compassion to your servant? And do you know what the king did? He threw her into prison to be punished until the money she owed could be repaid. I'd like this story to have a happy ending, but it doesn't. You see, when we don't forgive, it's like we're locked up in a prison. What could the servant have done differently to make the story end in a different way? That's right. If she had forgiven the debt, she would have been free too. Free to love and to help others some more. That's the one thing Jesus wanted us to understand. Let's check out this object lesson to understand more. That was a great story. Forgiveness frees us and God's forgiveness frees me and my forgiveness freeze others. How cool is that? I want to be able to forgive like the king in the story, the way Jesus was trying to show us. Do you? How many of you know that when, when you say that you're sorry, when we've done something wrong, it's not always easy, and that forgiving someone who has done something wrong to us isn't always easy either. But here's what the Bible says. In Matthew 6 verses 14 and 15, it says this, if you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. Do you know why we can receive forgiveness? Well, I'd like to show you something that can help us all understand. We can receive forgiveness because Jesus took the punishment of our sins upon himself when he died on the cross. See this coin? This coin is going to be us. The Bible says that we've all sinned. And then let's say that this red liquid is sin. So I'm gonna put the sin all over the coin so that it covers it, just like sin covers us. But Jesus came and Jesus, he's the light of the world. So I'm gonna put this candle right here. And you see, Jesus, he walked the face of the earth. He talked with people, he healed people, he loved people. And then he did the most amazing act of love ever. He died for all the people. He died for us, for me and you. And when he died, they put him in a tomb. But in the tomb, Jesus conquered death and sin forever. Can you see how the red liquid here is being sucked up? That's our sin. It's being sucked up by Jesus' death on the cross. That's what he did for us when he died. Now all we have to do is ask God for forgiveness. We can receive forgiveness freely because of Jesus, and we can give forgiveness freely because of Jesus too. We can forgive 70 times seven if we need to because of Jesus. I wonder what else the Bible has to say about this. Hi boys and girls. I spilled ketchup on my white shirt. A lot of ketchup. I just need to find the right spot remover to get it out. You know what? This actually reminds me of a man named David in the Bible. 
you know, the shepherd boy who slayed a giant and then eventually he became king? Yes, you're right, that David. Well, he was also a songwriter, boys and girls, and he wrote all kinds of songs in the book of Psalms about how he felt, and this song was all about how he needed God to forgive him. David wrote this, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Psalm 51, two. Iniquity simply means sin, the wrong things we do, anything wicked inside of us. So say it again with me, boys and girls, here we go. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Psalm 51, two. Do you know what Jesus did? He died for us on a cross and rose again three days later so we could have forgiveness of sins. The Bible says that Jesus' blood is like a sin remover, kind of like these spot removers in your laundry room. There isn't one thing though, boys and girls, that we can do wrong that Jesus' blood cannot cover over. There is no sin too stubborn that Jesus can't forgive, unlike this stain here. So let's cover over some of the words with these red t-shirts right here that represent Jesus' blood to see if we can remember the words that David so fervently prayed, asking God to clean him up. Let's do it together. We're gonna come over, cover over wash me. We're gonna cover over the word iniquity and we're gonna cover over from my sin. So boys and girls, let's try to say it together. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Psalm 51, two. Boys and girls, you can pray that prayer every day. Do what David did when he made a mistake. He didn't try to hide it. He went right to God because he knew God would always love him and forgive him. Hey, you caught me cleaning up. I found these links of forgiveness down here. This is a great prayer chair tool to have to remind me of God's forgiveness and also about my need to forgive others. Allie's gonna show you how to make them in just a few minutes. But hey, doesn't this week's prayer have cleaning words in it too? I'm sorry for my sins, wash me clean. It makes me curious about how prayer helps cleaning us up on the inside. You too? Well, why don't we have a little talk about that then? There may come a day when you don't feel like sitting in your prayer chair, not because you don't want to, but because you've done something wrong or you didn't do something you were supposed to do. Maybe you told a lie or was mean to someone and or maybe you were asked to finish a job and instead you played on your iPad. Those things can make us feel awful inside and that can make us act even more angry or sad. You may feel like God doesn't even want to talk to you when you're like that. But I can tell you that's completely and utterly wrong. You just heard now how Jesus did all the heavy duty cleaning of our sins so we could be friends with God. That means you can just climb into your prayer chair even when you're feeling bad about having done something wrong. Start your prayer with, I'm sorry, and then tell God the truth. The Bible says, when we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us that's half the prayer of repentance. The other half asks God to wash me clean. God's forgiveness is as sure as getting wet at the spray park. When we ask God to forgive us, we get soaked with his love. And that's when the Holy Spirit will nudge us to go and ask forgiveness from the people we hurt by our wrong words and actions. This is important work, friends. Today, sometime, wrap yourself in the links of forgiveness that you make and draw something in your prayer journal that will remind you of your repentance, of your I'm sorry, 
and God's forgiveness. Thanks, Pastor Laurel. I have some important work to do in my own prayer chair later, but I already feel God's love welcoming me by everything I've heard today. I really would like to have some of my own links of forgiveness to hold while I pray. Let's make some together. All you need is two different colored strips of paper. I chose orange and white, and you'll need a marker and a stapler, plus any other kinds of decorations you want to use. On one color, let's choose this one. You can write, God forgives me when, and then finish the sentence. And on the other color, you can write, I forgive others when. Here's the tricky part, where you join the strips together. So you might need a grown-up's help, but you have to staple the first loop, and then put the other one through and staple it just like this. And you can keep doing that until you run out of links. And remember, you can always add more links tomorrow, next week, or whenever you want. Don't forget to send us a picture and tag us at, at CLA Church Kids. We'd love to see what you create. Hmm, I think I hear some noise in the kitchen. I wonder what's going on over there. Hey Quinn. That was a really great lesson on repentance. And you know, I'm kind of feeling a little bit lousy about how I treated you when we were getting ready for church. I was rushed and flustered. I said some really mean words and I was being selfish. I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? For sure, Rachel. I'll forgive you. And I really appreciate you coming to me and asking for forgiveness. I was feeling pretty hurt, if I'm being honest, but I absolutely feel so much better, so I totally forgive you. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Quinn. Thank you for your forgiveness. You know, I kind of feel like a weight has been lifted, and I brought you something. A peace offering. Wow, thanks, Rachel. Kids. Thanks for being here today. This is a really important lesson on repentance, and it's so good to know that God forgives and that others offer us forgiveness too. And that it's really important to forgive other people too. Bye, happy Sunday.